Coming up on Theater Talk. Michael Bennett came and begged you to come back, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Not probably not on his own. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, it was like I, I was like, honey, I'm I'm not afraid of you because I don't know. I've where, got a life. Well, I, no, I, but but you you were 21 years old. Oh, I, I wasn't 21. You were 19 then. No, 19. No, no. So why weren't you afraid of him? Because well, I was because I was 19. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Theater Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation. God is the flowers and everything else that was or ever will be. And when you feel the truth so real, and when you love the way you feel, you found it. From New York City, this is Theater Talk. I'm Susan Haskins. And I'm Michael Riedel of the New York Post. Now, Susan and I have been enormous fans of The Color Purple. Yes, which is really, yes. I think, the best show on Broadway now. As good as it is, it's gotten even better with the addition of a true Broadway legend. Jennifer Holliday has joined the cast. Welcome back to Broadway. Thank you. Thank Welcome you to so Theater much. Talk. Thank yes, you. Tony winner. And can we Jennifer only say Holliday. that it is, I think, the greatest Tony Award moment Yes. When she sings that, I'm telling oh, you, I'm not going. You. It's like 8 million views on YouTube. Thank you. Yeah, I know that it was listed. And it always makes the list every year of, of the top 20 best moments. Do of you ever go back and watch it yourself? I don't. I am telling you. Number one, it was such uh, an awkward size for me, you know, so it's still sometimes very hard for me to look having lost 200, 200 pounds and, <laughs> and now and so to kind of look back at that time, sometimes I don't feel like I want to to go back there. But you're you're losing 200 pounds is a complete triumph. I mean, you played Effie who was had to be a, yes. a, a, an overweight woman. Yes. But then you, you, you lost all this weight. Yes. And so you here you come out on the stage of the color purple, this woman. Yes. And I go, oh, look at her. Look oh. at this felt woman. Oh. And then you opened your mouth to sing. Look what God has done. And, and I then went, you remember. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what happens. Which is what happens because a lot of people still not used to me being this size, and right. I've been this size for 20 years. Yeah, now. you have. Yeah, it's but um, thank God that my voice did not change. Did you ever worry about that when you were? Uh, I did losing the weight and fighting the. I the did weight? because so many people who uh, lost weight did. Uh, not lose their voice, but just in terms of the power yeah, yeah. of the voice. So I did. So what I did was uh, I used to uh, do aerobics and exercise and mm -hmm. sing oh. to try to see, okay, let's get this voice, you know, with the power. I don't have any vocal training or anything like that. So it right. kind of just self made my, you know, self a go, your voice is going to have to be the same. So I did a lot of aerobics to see you know how I can sing, push, press, keep that, keep that, that power, you keep that power. Again. And Afterwards. in Dreamgirls, how old were you when you started that? Show? Well, we started at 19. I was on Broadway doing your arms too short to box with God at night, That's right. That's and right. working on Dreamgirls in the daytime. 20 uh, when we were getting ready to do out of town tryouts to go to Boston to get prepared, and 21 when we opened on Broadway 35 years ago. Mm. We'll get to Dreamgirls in a moment, but I want to ask you what brought you back for The Color Purple? Was it a show that you liked, that you wanted to do, or? I mean, you have not been on Broadway since you did Mama Morton in Chicago, right? Yes. I had gone to see gone Color Purple. I had wanted to see it, and uh, my agent and I, we went just to, just to see the show. Then it was maybe um, six weeks later, maybe, that I uh, got the call from my agent saying that the casting director wanted to know if I would be interested in auditioning for John Doyle for Shaw Gabriel. Gabriel. And I kind of thought about it at first, and then I kind of smiled, and I said, hell yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> New York, he was like, you're not offended? No, I ain't offended. I'm coming. I'm coming. Yes. I have, I've not had to audition for a lot of things, but 
um, I wasn't offended because I knew his work. Mm -hmm. I had seen the show and I thought uh, it was an integrous enough piece mm -hmm. um, and it would be rewarding enough for me just to just to come to meet him because and, and to learn how to audition, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Since I ain't never, offer ain't never had to. Offer so. only, listen, Jennifer Holiday, offer uh, only. Listen. <laughs> I was like, let me go learn. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think you've done. I think you've done pretty well, and it's a thrill to have you back on Broadway. And when you see that Dreamgirls tape, which fortunately, because Christopher Cohen, son of Alex Cohen, is going to let us use a little bit of it, yes, I do have to say that even in that short span, you certainly see acting well, but right that's, there. But that's a big, though. No, yes, you know, a big, that's a big projection. And then when you think about it, too, you know. Um, even though that was on television, I still played it to the theater. Yeah, no, you're in the theater. Because that's how, you know, I played it every well. So I think that, I, I think that he wasn't trying to insult me by telling, you know, well, she'll have to come and audition for me. I think he was just saying, I don't know her body of work mm. as an actress, right. and my style is different. Yeah. yeah. And I must say that the month that I spent with him was like a master acting class. Uh -huh. Really? And I'm so grateful to him for never leaving me. I mean, from the very first rehearsal that I had, uh, he continued on, he's a busy man. We worked some nights to 9.30 at night. Really? Um, yes, because he had uh, some other projects he's working on. Mm -hmm. He would come on in and we would continue working. So I'm very grateful for the generosity of the, the time that he gave me to help me shape this shug to be one that would be my very own. That's your own, yeah. That I could that I could do and to to bring a level of acting uh to me that could match Cynthia's, you know, to go to mm -hmm. where she is. Now, of course, you worked with another great director, uh, Michael Bennett. Yes. From Dream Girls. Can you take us back to the time when you first met Michael and what was Michael Bennett like the first time you come into his orbit? I actually had never heard of Michael Bennett because I came straight from Houston, Texas, mm -hmm. singing in the Baptist Church Choir, <laughs> discovered by this young man named Jamie Patterson, a, a dancer, and went to the Broadway stage. So I was already on Broadway. Yeah, your arms doing are your too arms short. short to Box of God at the Ambassador Theater. And uh, they had told him about me because they were already in workshop on Dream Girls. It wasn't called Dream Girls then. They didn't even have anywhere close to the title at that point. And... So they had already told him. He came, snuck in to, to see me, uh, hear my one song then. I had a one big song then. Right, right. So myself and Cleavon Derricks. Uh, so one night I do get to meet him on the street. He's got his baseball signature cap. baseball cap, <laughs> little tight jeans, little things, sneakers, dirty sneakers, you know. Wiry. Yeah, not, not so wiry hmm. at this particular point. And uh, he said, you know, he said, you're very good. He said, and I think that they that they really like you and he said and I think it's just going to be up to you because you would have to be here every morning and do the show at night at 890 Broadway at where 890 he Broadway at 10 a.m. if you want to do it he said I think you're you know I think you're great you and Cleavon are both both great and you would add something to the program now he was not director then uh, he had not even really Tom Iron was directing Tom Iron was directing yeah. he had not even put in his money yet he just let them use the <laughs> space. The, the space yeah. you know to do it so he was kind of didn't have anything to say about anything no he was just casting for he somebody else he was going to be the producer oh I see all right yeah you know he was just going to be if they came up mm -hmm. with something mm -hmm. right. then they but no one had thrown their money in at that particular time do you remember yeah. when he moved in and took Oh, I oh I remember. Oh, tell us. Like yesterday. Oh, tell us when. Did, I remember when, like yesterday. <laughs> when did he move in? What happened? Well, I don't know. I think he took everybody by surprise uh, once the show had started to come together. Uh, the difference with Tom I and then they the workshop was very long. It was about a four hour production. Uh, Effie was a maid. She was a nurse. Oh it was God. a whole. It, it was a long <laughs> thing. She sang background for a white lady. It was, it was like a whole long show. And, um, but what we had and our new addition to it, I don't know, something clicked with him. It's also a kind of low point at his, his life. He was looking for another He had ballroom, hit, which had that, been a flop. Which had been a so, flop. Yeah. That really, really set him back in, yeah. uh, emotionally, um, uh, not money-wise or anything yeah. like that. Very wealthy man. But, but m mentally, yeah. it set him back. Um, he felt he let the cast down, um, you know, so just a lot of things was going through his mind. And 
I don't know, this, the show lifted him, the, the music, not so much of the, the story or anything, but just the music, the hours spent there. And he, he decided that he was going to take over. He also decided that I was going to be the star of the show <laughs> because originally um, it was really going to be Shirley Ralph's vehicle. Huh. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's really going to be her vehicle. So then that's when the war began because now it was Jennifer Holliday and Michael Bennett against Tom, Tom Ian and Shirley Ralph. Wow. And, um, and then, of course, Ian acquiesced because, you know, he just saw the future, right. you know, of, of something good. Mm -hmm. It was very hard for Shirley Ralph to take for a while. She and I, you know, became bitter rivals for a very long time. Um, so it's like the story. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for yeah. a very long time. Yeah. And um, a lot of it they also encouraged yeah. because it worked for, yeah. you know, for the show as Who well. Who was encouraging that? Michael. Uh, the producers, you know, because of the fact that it, you know, it lent itself to the story. So they were manipulating you in that way. I think that they, I think that they did. I think that they didn't set out to do it, but I, I think they saw, let's use this. It well, works. Michael would have seen that. I mean, if he's... Well, not a right away. Not right away because there were so many other factors that they had to you know, pulled together for him to just take over. You know, and then it all began in terms of how do we move forward. Uh, and then the only brief stop we had is that I did uh, get fired and I quit. So we, it was both. We, uh, and that's because Effie was never in the second act. Effie was only in the first act. And we only had the one song, and I'm telling you, which was written after I came on board right. as your book. For uh, you. Yes, for me. And, but it was only written for the first act. So Effie was supposed to have gone off and done go. drugs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that was supposed to be an it. Yeah. Uh, not to return uh, again. And my thing was that me being a young girl from Texas, I was like, I would not be able to explain my mother <laughs> why my character had to go off and be a drug addict. <gasps> I said, we're just not going to. I'm from Texas, down south. We're not going to understand why you couldn't pull your life together or why people didn't care or love them enough to pull their But now did Florence Ballard, the woman on whom your character was based, did she I didn't know anything her? about Florence Ballard. I don't Ballard. think she pulled herself together. Well, I don't know oh, anything about Florence I think Florence. she died of alcoholism. I barely knew anything about the Supremes either. So, so maybe, you know, Probably that it all well. worked out just yeah. as well that I did complain about it. I but mean, then, but Michael came and begged you to come back, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Not probably not on his own. <laughs> <laughs> probably not on his own, you know, because you know he has a sense of pride. But again, I I think that that threw him as well. That I really didn't know who he was, and it wasn't important to me that he was a famous director or something or the king of Broadway, and everybody was afraid of him. I wasn't afraid of him. I didn't even know him. So it was. I think that that also intrigued him in the sense that why isn't she afraid of me? Yeah. Why isn't she, I'm saying boo, why isn't she running? Yeah. You know, it was like, I, I was like, honey, I'm, I'm not afraid of you because I don't know. I've where, got a life. Well, I, I, no, I, but, but you, you were 21 years old. Oh, I wasn't 21. You were 19 then. 19. No, no, no. So why weren't you afraid of him? Because well, I was, because I was 19. Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> she didn't when, you, when you're grown, you get scared. <laughs> now, see, if I had been, if I had been, 25, 31, or, yeah, 25 yeah. or 31, I, I would have been to say, yes, so, Mr. Mr. Michael, whatever you want. You know? <laughs> like I everybody probably, else around yeah, him Yeah, like saying. everybody else would have said. But at, at you're young, who's, who's, what do you know? Do you remember when Henry, because I think he told me when he wrote, and I'm telling you I'm not going. Henry Krieger, it was right. During, it was during the rehearsal. Do you remember when he came to you with the song? I do. And what was your, what would you make of that song? Well, I thought... We were just, just like your book said, what do we do with this title? They had the title. Right. It was an awkward title. An awkward title. Yeah. So how do we get that to be sung? And he did come up with like a, a good melody line for that. So how do we get to that melody line? Mm -hmm. So you don't really have like a chorus. That's the great thing about Broadway. You don't need a chorus. It doesn't need to rhyme. Right. It doesn't need to do. So that's you're telling a story. Right. And so where do you want to give way with the story? So my thing with uh, Bennett, I was young, so I really hadn't had any love affairs or anything. So I couldn't really know any point. But I do know that when my father left my mother, when my mother didn't want a divorce. And she said, well, I, I, I begged him to stay, but he wanted to go. And that never Forgotten. So that's where the whole staying, staying came from, you know. Right. And Tom Iron would be good. Tom can, 
think of the story that he wants to sell. Not like a melody line, but he can go, he said, well, Jennifer should go, ah, 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 up here. Ah, mm. ah, 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 something. He would go like this, ah, 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 tear, tear down the mountains. Can she do something here? He wouldn't know a melody line, right. but he would know, let's go here. Please don't go away from me. Hey. Henry would be very good and say, okay, what about this? Stay with me. You know, and up there. So a lot of it, that was the beauty about back in the day of yeah. creating something right there in the moment. Yeah. And you get that. And the, fortunately, I had the vocal kind of to go with them. to go with wherever they were, where they were soaring. Now, the me holding that note in the middle. I got that from Streisand. And the reason why I got that is because Michael, because I didn't know how to act in terms of singing uh, a story. You know, I knew how to sing a song, but how do you tell a story through a song? So he would have me watch all of these Barbra Streisand old movies, <laughs> um, you know, Funny Girl, all of these kind of things to learn coordination of eyes, song, you know, lyric, everything like that. and. But my fascination with her, as amazing as she was, is like, how in the heck is she holding those notes so long? <laughs> you know? And I've never had any vocal, you know, vocal Brainy, training yeah. or voices or anything like that. So I taught myself how to hold a note. <laughs> and doggone it, we were gonna use it. <laughs> you, you made me watch all them Barbara Streisand tapes, we're gonna use this. So it was you your know? idea to hold that the, one of the most famous notes now on Broadway in that song? Yeah, where, where would they get it from? I mean, yeah. they wouldn't, <laughs> I mean, if no one, where would they, they don't sing, they wouldn't get that. So that was my only part where I felt that I brought something that wasn't done before right. that I actually stole from La Streisand. <laughs> um, I wonder there. where she got it, because she was self-taught, wasn't she? Yeah, I don't know yeah. where she got that. Different. She might just have originated yes, the, those yes. notes, baby, because she can hold them for like two minutes. Wow. I'm right there with her. What, I'm right there with her. What was it like when you sang that song for the very first time, I guess it would have been at the Colonial Theater in front of 1,500 people who paid for their tickets. Well, actually we were at the Schubert Theater in Boston. In Boston, right. Uh-huh, in Boston. And I think that that was one of the greatest feelings because number one, you have a, a, an all white audience and an all more reserved type. Conservative Boston type. Conservative Boston, type, Boston yeah. type audience yeah. who didn't know what they were coming to see. Right. And, uh, but they got it right away. Did they go nuts? They went nuts right away. And so <laughs> therefore, uh, my song was earlier in the middle of the first act. Oh, really? Right. So they had to move it all the way to the end of the first act. Because it was stopping the show. Because it was stopping the show. And then that became the intermission. People needed the intermission to recover from your <laughs> performance you. and that song. Thank you. But you know one of the most brilliant things about Michael's staging of that moment, mm -hmm. because uh, well, you were there, but he wanted everything to move fast. Yes. Swift, swift. Yes. And I always thought he got at the real brutality of show business when you have delivered this incredible song and then it's you're, next you're dressing, you just disappear it's and the girls baby. come on and the curtains are gone and you're done. It's, an, yeah. it's, it's a very rough uh, industry, you know, that we're in, uh, very rough decisions, uh, you know, that you have to, have to make uh, and it is next. Could you tell us the story about when, after we were famous, uh, meeting Ethel Murray? One of the things, of course, the New York Times Review, thank you, which you reprinted Frank in Rich. the book, yeah, yeah. Uh, she, they compared my moment to her moment. And so she came up to me and she said, well, you know, you're amazing and everything. I don't know why. I don't know why they compared that moment to ours, but you're going to lose your voice if you don't take care of it. You know, all that screaming, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, know, you know, but I understood the... The one moment of maybe it's a little bit of a jealous of, okay, being compared, but maybe it's a little bit of a warning yeah. and saying, if you, you need to gonna find a way to not have vocal problems creating that moment yeah. all of the time. So I didn't get offended by it at all. I, I took it, you know, I took it to heart. I laughed, it was crazy. I was like, okay, this is really crazy. She just told me off, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, you know, I just thought it was just a good thing, you know, that she even cared enough to say, you know, just, just take, take care, care of that, take care of that, that voice. That is a lot that you're, you're doing. I didn't take insult that she called it screaming, but. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but she wanted to know that there was no comparison to her moment. That's right, right. She didn't She's... know why they said that. But she does see that I do have something special. You're, and I'm I have something special. You're, I'm telling you, but I'm still Rosa. Thank Turner. you. Thank you. That's <laughs> what she wanted me to know. I'm so agog here that still, you're 20 years old, 21 years old, and you're dealing with this you're amount the biggest star of that Broadway had made in years. Yes. Did that just make you go crazy? What was that like? Well, I, I didn't handle it well after I became a star. You yeah. know, uh, we opened at 21. Uh, by the time I was 22, of course, I had a Tony and yeah. a Grammy Award by the time 23. Uh, but it did take its toll on me mentally. I became uh, suffered with clinical depression mm -hmm. many years. Um, my weight kept climbing. I climbed almost to 400 pounds, wow. uh, you know, 340 pounds. And um, so it did take its toll on me. As a young girl at that time, I don't think that they knew about much about depression yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the early 80s. So maybe I could have felt even better earlier had someone known. But or, they, or, or dealing with compulsive overeating. Yeah, all of those things. Yeah. But they thought maybe I was just, you know, being an artist and mm -hmm. temperamental. And oh, yeah, there were all the and rumors these, and yeah, the Yeah, and these stories, are the things that yeah. go with The diva. It. You're playing yeah. the diva. You yeah, become and, the diva. Right, and these are the things that go with that. I had no idea that I actually had a problem. You were you were close to Michael. Were you in touch with him when he was dying of AIDS out in Arizona? Yes. Did you ever visit him? I or? did not visit, he would not he allow. Would not keep, yeah. Yes, because of, you know, uh, of the structure of, of his uh, body like, and yeah. what he looked mm -hmm. like. He was already self-conscious about his looks before he had those moles on yeah, his face yeah. that he was born with. So he was always very conscious about the way he looked and how it bothered him. So those last years, you know, as he began to, to dwindle away, no. But those years prior to, you know, uh, our, our relationship and our friendship uh, was one... Uh, I guess they call it Svengali. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, a, totally. You know, and yeah. I know, and I, I, you know, and I read your book, and beside that harsh note that, you know, that Henry said about, you know, how could he love a, an overweight black girl? <laughs> um, you know, we love who we love, mm -hmm. and it doesn't always have to be sexual, or it doesn't even have to be um, uh, even fur further in love in terms of definition. Mm -hmm. But he did love me, and I loved him, as he did love his other leading ladies as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, you know, and he did marry them as well. He did. Know, Donna. In spite of his, him <laughs> being, being gay, gay. he yeah. did have girlfriends. He loved life, mm -hmm. and he loved what people brought to it, even though his own life so tormented, you know, with the with the drugs and his his own issues of yeah. of everything that he felt going into every piece. You know, and uh, being misunderstood often, uh, but yet wanting to be misunderstood, if you can understand that. Meaning that his complication worked for him. Worked for him, yeah. It kept people here. Interesting. You understand? But you spoke to him on the phone when he was dying? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I think that before he started to lose everything, he just wanted to reach out and say, you know, that he loved people. And I think that that was, you know, I think that that was one of the great things that people did not know about him, that he did have a lot of heart, not excusing any of his, of his sad self-destruction. And the, the addiction. And the addiction of drugs and alcohol, his, his self-destruction. So, you know, but the heart of it, he would at least try, you know, he would at least, try to have some uh, showing of warmth and the way he did take me where they were godless and I and not only your book and I read other people's book and they did see it as him you know manipulating me or using me or whatever but he never once abused me uh, I have lots of jewelry from Van Cleef and Arpels, <laughs> Cartier and Tiffany's. <laughs> so his love shines, <laughs> baby. So whatever you want to call it, see me at the jewelry store. <laughs> That's all I got to say. You know. You're fabulous. I love you. I love you. I love Bravo. you. So <laughs> you can't. You gotta see. Broadway is better than ever because Jennifer Holiday's back on Broadway, sacrificing herself in the color purple, <laughs> <laughs> working with a great director, John Doyle. 
I don't know if he's buying you any jewelry, no, but he's if he not buying this, it's no, a tip no, job. No, he's a simple man. I'm yeah. quite sure yeah, yeah, he will not be buying me. Maybe a chair. <laughs> Maybe a chair. <laughs> Maybe a chair. All right, don't miss Jennifer Holiday as Suge Avery in the color purple. At what theater are you at? The uh, at the Jacobs. At the Jacobs. Isn't that, a, isn't that amazing? Across from the Imperial. Oh my God. And at the Jacobs. So a Bernie Jacobs, who was the producer of Dreamgirls. And a daddy to both of us, to Michael yeah. and to me as well. Yeah. To where he taught me and say, the young lady, you're gonna have to get you because I really didn't know how to cope, yeah. you know, with being famous overnight. And he really took me aside. And, you know, he didn't try to fire me or anything. He was just saying, you're going to have to really Gotta pull, it together. pull yourself together. Yeah. Pull yourself together. The color purple you've got. And by the way, you know, the poster for Dreamgirls was purple. Yes. You're back. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. Jennifer Holliday, it's been a delight having you on Theater Thank Talk. you so I much both for having me. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Like a blade of corn, like a honey like a waterfall, a part of me, like the color purple, where do it come from, open up your eyes, look what God has done. You better get back. Your husband probably wondering where you are. Where do you want to be seen? With you. Our thanks to the Friends of Theatre Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theatre Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Vaux Foundation, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, the Noel Coward Foundation, Carrie J. Fries, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, and the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs. We welcome your questions or comments for Theater Talk. Thank you.